Now I've got the floorboards up, in this one I'll be insulating the floor, but before getting started it's worth checking out the condition of the floor and how the ventilation is currently working. So this extension was built in 1985, but the joists look brand new, which tells me that the ventilation is working well and comes from the two vents at the side here and then one at the back of the house. The airflow can then travel through to the shower room next door through the holes in the wall, and the same again through the sleeper walls which hold up the joists. These also have a damp proof course to stop rising damp moving up through the bricks and affecting the timber. Speaking of which, albeit that it's summer, the ground is also very dry and there's no evidence that it has suffered from rising damp in the past. If you do find that the ground below your floor is damp, then you can put down a damp proof membrane on the ground to slow the moisture coming up. For mine all is well, and at this stage I was also able to see that the cavity walls have insulation in them as well, which is good news. There are a couple of difficulties. One, the vents are at joist level, so I'm going to have to be careful insulating around them. And two, the joist spacing ranges from 13 to 17 inches and looks like they've been thrown in. Not a big deal, but I'll have to cut my insulation to fit. Let's jump in. For the insulation, you have two main options. PIR, which has the better insulation properties, but it's pricier, or a wool type like sheep's wool or fiberglass. This time I'm going for rock wool and I need to have something under it to stop it from falling out from between the joists. So either you can use a wire mesh or nylon netting, or you can use a breathable membrane, which is what I'm using. All three will allow moisture out from the insulation and joists into the void below to be whisked off by the airflow. However, with a breathable membrane, you can prevent something called wind washing. Wool type insulation works by trapping pockets of warm air in, but if it's open to a breeze from below, that warm air can be pushed out quickly, so it's not going to perform so well. With a breathable membrane, this will prevent wind washing, so I think it's the best choice to support the insulation. I bought mine from Screwfix, which when compared to Tyvek is much more like a fabric than a paper. No real conclusion, but I thought I'd show you the difference. To attach the breathable membrane, you can tack it to the underside of the joist with staples, but we'll probably need a small piece of batten or plywood to keep it in place, which is tricky to do with a small crawl space like mine, so instead I'm going to make little hammocks by hanging it over the joists. I made sure the face of the membrane was pointing downwards and unraveled a bit to help insulate the space between the first joist and the wall, and then stapled to the top of the first joist. A hammer tacker is your friend for this job and beats the regular stapler I've used in the past. Next I needed to get the membrane taut between the joists to prevent the insulation from sagging downwards. You can fix a piece of thin timber to the bottom of the sides of the joists, but I tried temporarily clamping the wood, putting the membrane taut, and then stapling. It will still look like it's sagging unless you get the staples right at the bottom of the joist, but will become pretty taut once the insulation is in. Once I got to the other side of the room, I left extra slack there too. For the insulation, I'm using thermal cavity wall rock wool, which was what I could find locally. The thickness is 100mm, which matches the depth of the 2x4 floor joists. Because my joist spacings are a bunch of different widths, I had to cut the bat to fit, which is easily done with a straight edge and utility knife. Then it's a quick process of pushing it in for a friction fit. The edges are slightly trickier though, so my solution here was to wrap the membrane over the top of the insulation and staple it to the joist, and this should keep the insulation in place. Where the vents are, it's really important that I leave these free and clear of insulation to allow the flow of air to the underside of the joist. Similarly, at the patio door side of the room, I had to stop the insulation short of the wall to allow airflow up to the vent. Last job is to add a vapour barrier over the lot which stops cold drafts from below, warm air being lost and slows the entry of water vapour into the insulation which can cause interstitial condensation. In the past I've used a thinner polythene sheet but this time I opted for a damp proof membrane because it was a very close match to the size of the room. The downside is because the gauge is a lot thicker, once laid I couldn't see the floor joists so it became a game of trying not to stand on hot lava. Again, I tacked it in place with staples. For radiator pipes, it's easily cut, and I could slide under any floorboards that I wasn't able to pull up. For the edges, if you've taken off your skirting board, you can lap the DPM up the walls for a really tight finish, or if not, you can use a sealant at the edges below the skirting. I didn't bother with the sealant as the floorboards go right up to the wall to create a fairly tight fit. 
Any rips I covered with aluminium tape. Finally, I could replace the floorboards and now it looks exactly the same as it was before, which isn't too satisfying as DIY goes, but it should make the room a lot more cozy in winter. This room is 10.6 meters squared and the cost to insulate came to 113 pounds, so about 10 or 11 per square meter. So is it worth doing? If you're building a house from scratch, well, you have to insulate by law, but it's a no brainer, just as it is for a garden office. But for the disruption in an existing property, I think you either have to have a cold house, be a Winico warrior, or be planning to live there for a long time. I haven't run the numbers for this project, but I reckon for what I paid, I'd see at least a 10% return on investment. So in 10 years, it will have paid for itself through reduced heating costs. However, if you're paying for it to be done professionally, it's a much harder call, but worthwhile if you're doing it yourself and you do it at the same time as laying new flooring. Speaking of which, next time is laminate. See you there.